Good morning everybody. I thought I'd give the Maverick irons a compare. I've got the three, so the Pro, the Maverick and the Maverick Max. I'm gonna show you some numbers. We're gonna talk about who might gain these clubs and if they're any good or not. Should be a fun one in the comments down below. Is it an iron you've looked at or not? Is it too expensive? Because we're gonna talk about the price of these clubs as well. Is it just another iron that we don't need or is it something that you are aspiring to hopefully test one day? Should be a fun one. Now when it comes to the Maverick for three sets of irons, it's interesting looks. I very much see the X range. This kind of iron never really moves away from the old fashioned X12s, X14, X16s. They're, they're classic Callaway looks. So you get more offset in the Max and then going down to the Pro where is next to no offset and the Maverick having in between step between the two as you'd expect. The thickness of the top line, the max is the thickest by far, then it goes down to the standard and then to the pro being the thinner. You lose, you've got two white, white lineup lines on the Maverick and the Max and the Pro, you lose those white lineup lines, which is a bit of a shame because I actually quite like those lineup lines on my irons personally. The other interesting fact with these, I think the head kind of length, so the blade length between the three is almost the same. It's very similar, where often in the Max it gets a bit long and big. So I quite like the squat uh, length of all three of these irons. And to me, it would make all three of them more gameable. And then the other thing, it would make me feel like I could blend this set because you're not jumping to something even at the top line jumps you're not jumping to some really long massively ugly oversized iron it still blends in some ways with its looks from the pro to the standard up to the max which is only a good thing in a sets of irons like these where I think blending will be a key option as you'd expect, the Pro is definitely the best looking, less offset. It's got that clean face, even though I do like the white line up line at the bottom and that thinner top line. It's certainly not the thinnest top line by a long way. It won't be as thin as your blades, but it's got a thin enough, uh, rounded enough edge for it to kind of appeal to most good players. Um, eyes. I think people in that medium bracket who want that kind of little bit of help but classic looks, that one really will appeal. And again, when we jump up to the max, I think that will appeal to a lot of people. It's not overly shouting tech at you from the backside to what you look down. There isn't any silly kind of trinkets hanging off it, which you can get on many clubs these days. All three are quite classic looking, well-made, premium looking golf clubs, to be honest. Right, should we look at the tech on these three irons and see what Callaway say about them? So we've got the three compared up on the website here. So they're all designed by artificial intelligence, all three models. They all have the flash face cup technology. The architecture of the face, they're saying, it's unique for every loft to try and allow for launches, off-center hit helps, spin rates, all kind of optimizing ball flights for each loft. So each club is tailored to perform to the loft they're hoping you are going to deliver with it. It's always quite an interesting statement because we all deliver such different dynamic lofts, but obviously there is patterns of more loft and less loft. All three have the tungsten energy core. So this is trying to position CG in the best place for each loft. Again, along with that face cup technology. So it really, everything's about maximizing what they can for each club. Looking at each club as an individual tool rather than just giving you a set with kind of one bit of tech across all clubs. And all three sets have the urethane microspheres. This is for feel, absorbing unwanted vibration. So when you hit that shot, you get that desired feel you want from a premium iron. When it comes to the head shape, the Maverick, they're calling it moderate. The Max is oversized and the Pro is compact, which is kind of true and kind of isn't. We'll talk about that a bit more when we take them out. Certainly when I look at the top lines of the three, you can see this is the Pro, this is the standard and this is the chunkier one. But blade lengths don't seem that different between the three, which I actually quite like. Bear in mind you've got an oversized iron, sometimes can be chunky and really long. They're all quite squat and pretty. Custom grips, custom shafts in all three options as well. So it's quite interesting mix of irons. You've got the three very distinct names, but they're sharing all very much similar technologies to each other. So starting with the Max, it's chunky. Offset, it's kind of short and fat. It's really short and fat, but I quite like it. Normally this kind of club's really long and ugly. This is short and a little ugly. I prefer that. Yeah, it's the sound I'd expect. You know, it's, it's quite a tingy, it's quite, it's that game improvement sound. Joking aside, I do quite like the look of it, to be honest. 
as chunky goes, I like it not being too long. I like the two white lines on the bottom a lot. Ping obviously always put that on their clubs and I comment about it and I do like it on these. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I'm hitting in a different environment, obviously. The sound is tingy, but it's not shocking at all. It does feel like it's going to be coming off fast through lofts and all those kind of elements. Let's compare it up to the next one. So standard next. Okay, not as fat, still pretty heavy on the top line. Very X range, X12, X16, X18s, anyone who remembers all of those. Decent amount of offset in there that will put some off. Again, quite a stubby little length, which I like. Is that the same sound, maybe, as the Max? It's a nice sound. For a game improvement, it is a decent sound. Hit that one really good. Right, one more and we'll go to the Pro. Oh, that's a little skinny, that one. Not my best hit at all, but done okay, considering. Right, Pro to finish. Looks great. No offset, the offset's gone. Top line's gone medium. It's not thin, it's medium. Again, the blade length isn't crazy long. This is good looking, very, very good looking. A little heavy, could hit it better. So we lose the white line when we go to the Pro. I reckon if I was on tour, I'd ask them to paint that back in for me. Now this is interesting, this does feel nice, but sound wise between the three, they're pretty blendy. I'm not feeling that this one's particularly much quieter than even the Max. And it is a nice sound, a sound I could easily gain. It's very much a feel I could easily gain. Yeah, that's nice. One more and we'll compare the three. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do it one more with the Max and I'm going to hit out the launch monitor here because I don't want to capture the number so you won't see any ball flight. I just want to hear it. It's a fraction louder but there's not much in it. That's quite an interesting sound blend between quite extreme different the kind of appearing and tech kind of driven clubs. Well, let's take a look at the numbers of these three irons. So what's interesting, I've got the lofts in front of me here. So the Maverick standard is the least lofted at 27 in a seven iron. Then the max goes to 30. So the game improvement oversize is actually more lofted than the standard, which is quite interesting. And then the pro is at 30.5. So certainly not weak lofted in any way. It's all, all of them are stronger, stronger lofted. Uh, the Maverick standard out of the three is the strongest in lofts. And we see that in the numbers. If you simply look at the three numbers here. So you can see the Maverick here definitely goes the furthest. 168 average 7 iron compared to a 159 in the max. And 164. I've deselected shot 13 here because it, it was a misread. Don't worry, that's not in the numbers. Um, so you can see that one at 164. I would expect the max to go further. Really, it should be going pretty much the same as the Pro. Um, and if you look at my longest hits with the Pro, I've got 165, 166. And obviously with the max at the bottom here, I've got a 164 and a 163 as well. Just a few other drop offs. So my strike's really playing its part in there. Now peak heights. Um, again, the Maverick, the standard is the lowest here at 25 average compared to 29 average with the Pro and 26, uh, sorry, 28 average with the Max. Again, the Loft really kind of powering through. 
no matter what the tech is, the loft's always kind of coming through as the main thing. Uh, and then the spin's showing the same reflections, 4,500 in the Pro. These are seven iron hits, down to three nine in the lower lofted, which you'd expect, because it's lower lofted, so you're gonna get a few lower spin shots in there, because it's basically a different club. And then 4,500, so again, the max right in line with the Pro for spin numbers. Launching, this is where you get advantages from the max, possibly, 18.7, so 0.7 higher than the Pro which again is quite interesting. So I think the Max, even though it will go the same distance as the Pro, it is gonna offer a little bit more launch. That is something to buy into. I buy into extra launch. Launch for me is someone who it's relatively low. Gives me a few extra options of going over obstacles, um, getting out of long rough with lower lofted clubs. So I think launch is often something that's not looked at, which does really buy you some money. Um, and then the Pro is you're expecting the lower launching, 16 degrees, 15.8 here average so two degrees lower launch again for me when you start taking loft off that's just going to punish me so i'm going to have to really combo that set if i wanted to go for that set and then in turn the peak height's going to hurt my land angle a little bit again when low lofted clubs come off the other thing to stand that stands out for me with these three irons is how blendable they are really as a set so if you wanted to have pro in the long uh, in the short stuff and then maybe one maverick or even jump to the max i probably would when i start running out of loft so for me five irons modern clubs four iron basically three iron i drop them out and i start comboing into max because i'm again buying in it's that higher launch than it offers an interesting spread of numbers, very, very close, but doing exactly what you'd expect lofts really to do. I'm not seeing any benefits in dispersion over any of those either. I would see my shots all pretty much being pretty much the same. Four right with the Pro on average, 10 right with the Maverick and 12 with the Max. Again, I'm seeing that all as me, to be honest. And also, as I adjust out there to what I wanna do, I think I hit, did I hit, which one did I hit last? I think I hit the Pro last, didn't I? So the Pro, I'd obviously just seen a few missing tonight and I started to adjust myself. And I think that's the interesting thing that worked into lots of um, ideas around dispersion when it comes to custom fit. Interesting numbers, pretty decent. The spin is a fraction low, but again, that surely that's a six iron and I'm in off the mat, so it's not that far away, is it? So looking at the price of these free irons, 749 for around seven iron is the UK pound price I'm finding. It'll differ in your territories depending on where you're watching this video. But that places it very much in that bracket of other brands where you'd find um, tailor-mades, tight lists, pings coming in a little cheaper depending on what model you go for. But certainly nowhere near as crazy expensive as I was expecting, but certainly not cheap by a long, long way. Now, who would game sets of clubs like this? I think, I mean, it's any golfer from a tour pro up to a beginner subject to your budget. They step at every gap. You would probably argue that the Maverick Pro could do with slightly a bit more of a spin upgrade. I think it's a fraction low in spinning on my testing, but still you could work around that with your preferred deliveries on what you do with things like shaft weights and stuff like that. And also you could get the lofts changed if you wanted to. I mean, I could add a degree or two of loft to that Pro of 7.9 if I wanted to get a fraction more launch and a different spin model. I think the most important thing when going for a set like this is to remember the blending options that can be had. And this is where I think fitters really fail and certainly manufacturers fail. If you can get testing these through the sets, because I'm making a 7 iron here and I can do pretty much what I want with either of these 7 irons, I need to know when I get to the 5 iron, can I still handle those lower launches in the Pro or do I need to jump up to the max to get that extra launch and I, maybe i can go for the stronger lofted uh standard maverick but then do i need two six irons stuff like that which i had in my bag prior when i played tightly science because the loss ran into each other um or they didn't the numbers ran into each other but the loss jumped because you get that slight loft discrepancy in the middle one i think the key thing here would be thinking blending if you're going for these sets just to get a whole set of them i think most students i would teach you would get most advantage of blending and getting the help out of the added launch of the Max in the low lofted irons and then having the beautiful feel and kind of appearance 
of the Pro maybe in that short run. But again, something for you to go and test. Let me know down in the comments down below. What do you think of these irons? Would you game them or not? Uh, have you considered gaming um, or blending? Sorry, have you considered blending? Is it something that you think about when you get your irons? I do see a lot of people still buying sets of irons. And I don't think I fought of sets of irons now. For literally almost the last two years, I've moved away thinking I'm just gonna have that set or that set. I'm so trying to fit literally individual clubs now. So I want my five iron fit as well as I want my driver fit as well as I want my wedges fit. And I think it's something you should consider and demand a bit more from your fitters and from these companies to give those fitters the weapons to allow you to blend these clubs. Let me know in those comments down below. Speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.